Carl, with your vast experience of the river and so much more, what, what's on your mind as you look out tonight? I was asked to talk about the lost half mile, which is just downstream of here below the Science Museum. And I want to begin by saying this story owes a great deal to Bill Ron and the Bridge Design Review Committee of 1990 and to Peter Howe and the Boston Globe. And Tony Tangaro's in the room too, he was part of that. So, Tony. so the Lost Half Mile was created 150 years ago when more than half of that portion of the river was covered by railroad bridges, sidings, and warehouses. In a landmark book in 1960 titled The Image of the City, the MIT planning professor Kevin Lynch interviewed 30 Boston residents. Although his subjects described many more m memorable places in Boston and Cambridge, none of them was able to make a visual connection between the Charles River and Boston Harbor. When a court order directed the city of Boston to build a new jail a few years later, the only site that no one objected to in the city was the riverfront site of the Registry of Motor Vehicles. Try explaining that to visitors from out of state or out of the country. Uh, then came the Big Dig. A remarkable group of volunteers, including a number of the city's <coughs> architects and planners, took up the question of crossing the Charles and met literally almost every week for over a year. Uh, with the help of the Swiss, the Swiss engineer Christian men, Boston learned about cable state bridges and then built one across the Charles, which opened 12 years later. Think, remember that number 12. Uh, the artery also committed to a master plan in the construction of 40 acres of new public space up and downstream of the Zakem Bridge. In 1992, a citizens advisory committee began a a master planning process with the help of the Cambridge firm Carl Lynch and Sandell. In the meantime, Bill Geary, the commissioner of the Metropolitan District Commission in the 1980s, used to tell developers, we bring you your front yard. Congress Group Ventures took up his challenge, bought the land, bought a parcel at North Point and completed three tall buildings in 1997 still surrounded by old, dilapidated, one-story warehouses. The park construction moved very slowly, and Congress Group's lender, GE Capital, phoned the parks agency, my phone, <laughs> every six months to ask if the park was really going to ever happen. That same year, 1997, the sculptor Nancy Schoen learned that skateboarders were skating on, over, and around her tortoise and the hare in Copley Square. She came to the parks agency and asked if a skate park could be included in the new open space. Then she connected with Renata, and the Conservancy patiently worked through another lengthy process, actually a little longer than 12 years, finally finished just last month. In about two... <laughs> One, one of the planners at uh, DCR has said that the skate park may have more people per minute per square foot than any other park in the Commonwealth. They are there at 8.30 wow. in the morning and at 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> Finally, in about 2001, as Peter Howe alluded to, the Citizens Advisory Committee learned about sinusoidal tubular steel truss bridges. Think of sine curves. And 11 years later, the ribbon was cut for the first pedestrian bridge to connect Charlestown, not only with Cambridge, but all the way upriver to Newton. And that's the story of the lost half mile being created by a lot of Boston volunteers who joined to bring it together. And Carl Hagelin, right in the middle of all that. Carl, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to sleep tonight saying sinusoidal tubular steel. <laughs>